What's up agents, Zero here, welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at Minecraft Education Edition. Now I'm sure you guys have already technically heard of Education Edition, whether or not you've actually played it is a completely another story, but basically it was created so that people in schools would be able to teach kids about the real world using a game, which is actually kind of nice. I remember watching a video a while back about a map that somebody made specifically for Education Edition made to teach kids about the Oregon Trail, which is actually kind of nice, but we're not here to focus on that. We're here to focus on the science behind Education Edition. Now, there are two different ways that you can get Education Edition, and one method is actually a lot easier than the other. So the first method, and this is the hard method to get Education Edition, you have to actually get a legit license for the game. And the reason why I say it's hard is because either you, ha you have to get past Mojang, which I'm assuming that's how it works, I'm not 100% sure, and you have to be an actual instructor, so that is the first way that you can get, again, not exactly the easiest way to get Education Edition. Now, the second way, and this is the method that I use to get Education Edition into my lab, and you guys can do the exact same thing yourselves. If I go into the settings menu, when you go to create a world, what you can do is if you go to the cheats, activate cheats, and in between activate cheats and always do, which I can't actually select it right now because it's kind of grayed out you have an education edition toggle so this is not an add-on this is not a resource nothing like that nothing you need to download this is built directly into the game which is actually really nice so you can just toggle it the one thing i do want to mention is that when you enable this it will not just automatically put education edition in your world what will instead do is create a copy of your world and then install Education Edition onto that copy. So let me go ahead and go back in here. So if you take a look in my game, if I take a look, it says world name edu in square brackets, and that says zeros lab. So that is how it labels your world, is it labels it with edu, so it's easy to tell exactly how you actually have Education Edition in your world. Anyway, you guys are probably here because you want to see how Education Edition works, and I'm going to be going ahead and showing you guys. I'm not going to show you guys absolutely everything. I'm actually going to be focusing several videos on Education Edition because there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Education Edition, but I'm not going to be showing absolutely everything, even in the multiple videos that I'm going to be doing, or even in this video in particular. So, first thing I'm going to be showing you guys these are elements that you can get. This is not all the elements that you have in the game. So if I go ahead and go into my create, create inventory, excuse me, and I go ahead and go to construction, you can see there's a new option right here called elements. If you open this up, and let me go ahead and switch right here. These are all the elements that you have access to. So you have a ton of different elements that you have the ability to use, and something I should probably mention is that if I go ahead and get out, say for example, this oxygen, just place it down. This is just an ordinary block. That's literally all it is, is ordinary blocks. And I actually have a specific set of elements in this chest, and for a particular reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and grab all this stuff. And you guys may have noticed right here, there's this triple question mark block and I did not rename this by any means this is legitimately in education edition I'm not gonna pull this out and I will explain this a little bit later but for right now just know that this is here I will be explaining that a little bit later so the first thing we want to know is how we actually get the elements because you can in fact get these in survival I don't know how you actually make these blocks but you do have access to chemistry equipment you have four different pieces of chemistry equipment that you have access to, which actually makes a lot of sense in my uh, lab because this is technique kind of thing that I can showcase. The first block we're going to be taking a look at, this is the element constructor. Now, this can be used in one of two different ways. So the first way you can use this is, I'm just going to do something very simple. I'm going to put one of each of these particles here, and this went ahead and created a hydrogen particle. And before we go any further, I want to mention that there's going to be two links down in the description to PDF files that you guys will check out. One of these PDF files 
is specifically to teach you about education edition and how all the elements and stuff works in order to make all the different stuff in this uh, version of Minecraft. And the second one is how to make the individual elements using the element constructor. So this is the first way that you can use the element constructor is if you know the actual amount of atoms, yes, you are actually using atoms and some atomic particles in order to go ahead and make these elements manually. So that is one use for it. So I just went ahead, as you already saw, I made one hydrogen. And one thing I should probably mention is that this is an endless amount of hydrogen. I don't need any more hydrogen than was currently in my inventory, but this is an endless amount of hydrogen. So let me go ahead and turn this off. Now the second method that you can use with the element constructor is, say for example I have this sodium and I want to know exactly what it takes to make sodium. Well, if I just put sodium in here, it creates the atom for me. And if I really want to, I can go ahead and take this out. And yeah, like I said, this creates an unlimited amount of whatever it is you put in there. So that is the element constructor. Next, we're going to take a look at the compound creator. Now, this is what is basically this version of Minecraft um, crafting table. If that makes any sense, that probably doesn't. It does not replace the crafting table, but this does create specific crafting recipes for you to go ahead and make certain things. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you actually craft things. So let me go ahead and scroll to where I need to be in order to craft these compounds that I'm going to go ahead and make. So the first one, this one is a fairly easy one to understand. So I put two hydrogen in here and I put in one oxygen. So this went ahead and created, well, water, H2O. That one is fairly obvious. Pretty much everyone knows how to make water. And again, just like the element constructor, this is endless. So now that I have these two hydrogen and one oxygen inside the compound creator, I can get limitless water with this. And this is actually shapeless, by the way. You can have these in any configuration you want. So next we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to show you guys all the crafting recipes because obviously I don't have everything in my inventory, but I want to at least get you guys an idea on how this actually works. So next we're going to put in sodium and chlorine. This one is also obvious, but not near as obvious as the water. This will create salt. I don't think salt is actually used. I could be completely wrong. I have to double check the actual recipe compound creator guide in order to double check. But yeah, that's how you create salt. Now let's create something that is actually a, a little more complicated. So what I need to do is I need these six carbon and I need to go ahead and grab 12 hydrogen just like this and how much oxygen do I need? I need six oxygen. So let's go ahead and put that in here and this is going to create, as you can see, sugar. And again, like I said, this is all 100% infinite. So there are a lot of different compounds that you can actually make using this and it's actually kind of interesting and certain compounds are actually necessary in order to create further things that much as I'm probably fairly obvious. Next up, this right here is the lab table. I'm not going to focus on making anything in the lab table in this video, but I do want you guys to understand how this works. So this is basically how you make certain elements because you do obviously have the compound creator and that's fine and all, but you actually need the lab table in order to make certain things. So let me go ahead and scroll down to what I can actually make. I'm not going to actually make anything using this lab table, but I do want to go ahead and take a look what I can make. So some things that you can make with this, and actually this is the entire list of things that you can make with this. You can make bleach, which all that does is turns anything that is colored, basically like wool, beds, banners, and completely turns it white. You have a heat block, which gives uh, off well, heat and melt snow and ice. There's an ice bomb which you can make with this, which you throw it at water and it turns it into ice blocks. And then you have super fertilizer. I realize I said that weird, but just roll with it. And what this does is that what it just makes it so that plants will grow instantaneously, which is actually kind of interesting. So what happens if you put items in here 
that do not actually create any sort of compound whatsoever. Well, first off, I do want to mention that if you get a mixture actually correct, this GUI up here will in fact be animated. So you'll know when you put something in correctly when one of these things is actually moving. So that's actually good to know. But if I go ahead and click combine, what this is going to do is it's going to take all the items inside of it and it's going to create an item just like that. Much is fairly obvious. But because this didn't actually make anything in particular, what I got instead was garbage. So that is the lab table. Now, last but not least, this is the material reducer. Now, this is actually a really interesting thing. So, let me quickly go ahead and throw all this stuff inside of this chest for right now. All right, so this is actually kind of interesting because it breaks down blocks into their individual elements. This is technically how, if you were in a survival setting, how you would actually get the individual elements by themselves. And I've got a few examples that I want to go ahead and show you guys. We're going to first focus on this top row of elements. So if I go ahead and go in here and I throw some dirt in here, look at that. What this is doing is it's breaking the, the dirt into all the different materials that it takes in order to go ahead and craft it. So if I go ahead and take out the silicone, as you notice, the dirt is no longer there. And now the actual uh, square where it would be is red. You cannot put anything new in there until you've taken out all of the materials from inside of it. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And you can get a lot of materials out of this, to be completely honest. Next, we're going to put in ice. And what this is going to give us is a whole bunch of hydrogen over a stack of hydrogen and a whole bunch of oxygen, which makes a lot of sense because ice is just frozen water. Now lastly, let's go ahead and put in this oak wood, and as you can tell, we get ourselves some carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So that's actually not too bad. Now the reason why I have these three other blocks in here is for a specific reason. I'm going to go ahead and pull all three of these out so you guys see exactly what this does. So let's first put in redstone ore. So it creates elements, but as you can see, it also creates these question mark blocks that I showed you guys earlier. Now, according to Education Edition, I'm just going based off of what I know because it doesn't exactly explain this all that well. So basically, what these question mark blocks are is basically anything that does not exist in real life that exists within Minecraft. That probably doesn't make any sense, but that is the best explanation that I can go ahead and give you guys. So let me go ahead and place this down. And this is exactly what it looks like. So it's actually kind of interesting. Again, with the individual elements, like for example, this uranium. Yeah, this is just simply a block, and this is what it looks like when it's placed down. So it's pretty much the same with every single element. And you can do the exact same thing with pretty much anything else you want. Actually, I shouldn't say you can do it with pretty much anything else in the game because I did do some testing before I got started with this video. There are certain things that are not compatible with this material reducer. I don't really know what the full list is, but I did at least find at least some stuff it is not compatible with. I tried to do like maybe individual items, like I put a sapling in there because I figured that was a plant. So of course, it would probably break down into something. It apparently did not. I tried a redstone block. It didn't do anything. So there is a list of things as to what does not work in the material reducer itself. I don't know what the full list is, but I only did a small amount of experimenting in order to figure out exactly what I did. Now, I will go ahead and say this one last time. This is not the only time that I'm actually going to be taking a look at Education Edition because there are a ton of crafting recipes for some really interesting things that you can go ahead and make in Education Edition. And again, I'm going to be making further videos on the matter because this is actually kind of cool things to do. I do know for a fact, and I have done some testing with a few of these things. You can make a balloon, which actually does float. You can make glow sticks. You can even make uh, chlorine bleach, which I've already explained what chlorine bleach is. Basically, it turns like uh, dyed wool and uh, beds and stuff 
uh, basically turns them completely white. I did already explain that, but there is a, there's a ton of things that you can go ahead and do in Education Edition. And I'm looking forward to actually looking into this a little bit more in detail. I hope you guys are as well. But anyway, with that out of the way, I think this is actually a good place for me to go ahead and end off the video. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you did, make sure that like button. One more than make sure that subscribe button for future content. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and AgentCP0 to stay updated. This is Mr. Stews. Thank you guys for watching. And with that, I will see you guys later.